Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, so this is the Fortran Keras Deep Learning Bridge. Um, it's for scientific computing. Uh, we're calling this library uh, FKB for Fortran Keras Bridge. Um, and it's with a host of collaborators at the University of California, Irvine, uh, Chapman University, um, as well as Milan at um, the University of Miami. Um, so just an overview. Um, I'll talk, I'll introduce uh, deep learning, why it's important, um, why we care about it. Um, then I'll briefly describe uh, the resources that are available for deep learning. Um, and then I'll, you know, what I'll build up to is this, this bridge. So how we can take, um, you know, take advantage of areas where deep learning resources are plentiful and bring them um, into areas like Fortran um, that maybe don't have so many of those resources. And then at the end, I'll briefly show an application of this to a climate modeling problem. Um, so just starting off with uh, first, you know, where, where is deep learning used? Um, so it's deep learning is a subfield of, of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, it's, it's used pretty much everywhere, right? E every day you probably touch something that has deep learning in it. Um, so if you're looking at autonomous vehicles, for example, um, and you're looking at maybe a company like Tesla, um, the, the back end of their autonomous self-driving system relies on deep learning models uh, where the inputs to this system would be like the pixels from their cameras. Um, and then the, the deep learning systems are tasked with uh, making decisions uh, based on those pixels to correctly steer the car. Um, if you're looking at like product recommendations for users, uh, a company like Netflix is, is going to be using deep learning systems to make recommendations uh, based off the information they have available to them. And then you, you've probably heard of this uh, DeepMind system beating uh, the, the world's best Go player. Um, so in games, uh, there's, there's a lot of, of deep learning. Um, in, in biomedical imaging, uh, these deep learning systems are being used to, to identify diseases and help make recommendations to doctors to, to better treat those diseases. Um, and then in, in climate modeling, well, I'll, I'll give an application of later on. Um, if we want to better understand the Earth's climate, um, these deep learning systems of late have, have really showed uh, tremendous improvements over, over standard methods. Um, so, so really the, the power of deep learning comes from the sense that if we have large amounts of data, um, we, can, we can train these deep learning systems on that data. And, and typically the performance that you see is gonna be better than any heuristic based, uh, based approach. Um, and so I'll just say from, from this project, um, I'm, I'm from the machine learning um, side of things. Um, and so the, the motivation for this project really came out of necessity. So I was working um, on developing machine learning techniques for climate modeling, and we needed a way to, to transfer these deep learning systems uh, to an area where it was Fortran dependent um, for the, the climate model we were using. Um, and so there was really no, you know, no available way to do this. So, so that's where the motivation comes from. Um, so just briefly, I'll give you the, the one slide overview. What is deep learning? Like, how does it work? Um, so deep learning, we can think of as a graph um, of, of connections um, where each edge in the graph has some scalar value associated with it. And then at the nodes in this graph, some computation is usually happening um, that is a result of those scalar weights, um, as well as the incoming information along that edge. Um, and so typically the general flow, like there's, there's different architectures um, and different configurations and how you connect these nodes together. But the general idea um, is that you receive some input um, into what would be called the input layer. It's passed through a series of these layers where each layer is performing some computation um, on the, the inputs. Um, and then there's finally an output layer. And we simply call a, a network like this deep in the sense that it has multiple of these uh, hidden layers. And then when you hear someone say that we're, we're training a deep learning system or the network is learning, um, what, they're, what they're saying is that these outputs can be compared with some type of ground truth target. This could be historical data. It could be um, labeled data that you have available. Um, and then 
there's some computations that we can perform so as to change these weights in order to minimize that error at the end. Um, so that's that's the general idea. Um, so now that we've you know, we've kind of introduced deep learning, said why it's important, what is it, um, we can begin to ask um, where, if, if we want to implement a, a deep learning model, um, where might those um, libraries be available? So um, we can, you know, we can go and look for for resources that provide these deep learning models to us. Um, so there's a whole bunch of you know so, somewhat complicated math and and a bunch of information that you have to keep track of. And so these libraries that have been written actually provide all that for you. And they make it very easy for a user to, to quickly build one of these systems and train it um, with actually very little code written on the, the user side. Um, and so uh, there, there's, there's libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch that are <laughs> maintained by Google and Facebook. Um, and so really co companies develop uh, or devote a lot of resources to maintaining these libraries. So if, if we think about how, how we can move that to, to areas like Fortran, um, it might not make sense to try and replicate the entire library, but uh, look for ways in which we can, we can take information out of these libraries um, and move it to Fortran. Um, which you know, which will lessen the amount of work and upkeep on our part, but also provide powerful features to to users in Fortran. Um, and so, so similarly, like why why might we want to use uh, deep learning models in Fortran? Um, and so the the you know example I'll give for this comes from climate modeling. So in in certain situations where right we're we're running a, a climate model, we might want um, the neural network to uh, emulate certain physical properties of, of the climate system. For example, you might want to, to train a network to keep track of the temperature or pre precipitation that's, that's taking place within your environment. Um, and we would do that because we're interested in forecasting these conditions uh, forward over time. Um, and so if, if neural networks are really the, the, best, the best model available to do this, then we're gonna wanna, um, right, it's, it's one thing to train them on historical data, but then we also need to test them um, in a sense where, where those dynamics can be carried forward over time. Um, and so a lot of these, these large scale climate models that are able to compute those interactions are written in Fortran. Um, so we need a way to take our, our model that comes from you know this this area, and we need to bring it over to to run in these Fortran environments. So in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna I'm gonna build up you know what would be a bridge that we can go from these uh, areas where the resources are abundant and how we can move them over to um, to resources where they're scarce. Um, and so. Right, so when we, when we think about a bridge, just generally bridges have anchors on both sides. Um, and so what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna develop first what I would call the, the deep learning anchor of this bridge. And then um, once we've established that, I'll move over and discuss the, the Fortran anchor. Um, so first, when we, when we look for languages that um, support lots of deep learning capabilities or that are very popular. We see that Python is, is really second to none here. Um, so just in terms of, of pure usage, um, people that are implementing these deep learning systems are, are exclusively almost using Python. Um, and so, right, uh, something obvious here is that, that Fortran doesn't, doesn't make it on this list. So the, the resources available to Fortran or deep learning are, are really not there. So we need, we need a way that we can, can bridge those over. And then so looking within uh, Python libraries, um, what library within Python does it make sense to, to build that anchor off of? And so we see, again, just based purely on popularity, the, the Keras library um, is, is the most popular among deep learning practitioners. Um, so Keras is going to be our choice on on where we anchor this this deep learning side of the bridge. And so just briefly describing uh, what Keras is. Um, so Keras is a it's a high level API uh, that's 
built on top of TensorFlow. And so what TensorFlow allows you to do is, um, I, I would say, uh, manage more of the low level things. Um, and TensorFlow will, will talk to CUDA, which then allows you to, to run on GPUs. Um, and so Keras, Keras is very special in the sense that it's, it's very easy to use. Uh, it really only takes a couple lines to, to build a powerful neural network. Um, but at the same time, it also provides great flexibility to users. So if you want to implement custom features, you can also um, do that as well. Um, so so for, for us, Keras is, is the library that we're going to be interfacing with um, in order to extract information from Keras and then transfer that over to uh, what would be our Fortran anchor. Um, so then, so now that we've established this, what would be the deep learning anchor, then if we go and look for, for a place to, to anchor on the Fortran side, um, there's uh, really not a lot of options. Um, fortunately, uh, Milan, uh, who's also attending this conference in 2018, uh, created Neural Fortran, which is uh, it's a neural network library um, specifically for, Tran, uh, for Fortran. Um, it offers fully connected layers, which is uh, one type of neural network layer. Um, you can also do the training I talked about with a specific loss function. Um, there's also multiple activation functions and some nice features for data parallelism. Um, so specifically, because there are so uh, really few options, Neural Fortran provides a, a really nice interface that we can anchor the other side of, of this bridge. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'll just go here. Yeah. So this, it, seeing this in a diagram, um, so it, it would be something like this, where on on the right side here um, we have what would be the the deep learning ecosystem, in a sense where we're gonna, the, the FKB bridge, right, sits and navigates between these two. Um, and the, the Python side of this bridge is gonna interface with Keras. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract information um, from Keras and from, from those Keras models. Um, and then we're gonna transfer that information across the bridge to the Fortran side, um, where on the Fortran side, uh, this, this piece of the bridge um, really seeks to extend the, the features provided in Neural Fortran um, so that we can um, make more, more powerful networks, um, make them a little bit more customizable. Um, and then this, this is where you would, you would drop uh, FKB into you know, your, your large scale scientific computing framework. Uh, it could something like a climate model um, so that you can use those networks uh, with, within that system. And so I'll, you know, I, I want to stress that this is a, it's a two-way bridge. So if for some reason you are building networks and you're training them inside Fortran, um, you can also transfer those models to Keras if you want to do something um, specific in Keras or if you want to um, take advantage of the GPU capabilities that, that Keras will offer. Um, so it, it, a very nice feature of the bridge is that it's uh, bi-directional, so we can, we can go both ways. Okay. Um, so I, I wanna uh, talk a little bit about the, the features that the Fortran side offers. So I, I mentioned that we're using um, the uh, Milan's Neural Fortran library. And so, um, what we what we wanted to do in this case is is extend that library and make it a little more customizable. So so the way the initial library was written, um, it provided uh, it provided support for fully connected layers, um, but specifically in deep learning, you could have multiple different types of layers. Each one um, will really serve a specific purpose um, that the architect you know can decide when when they're building. Um, and so what we wanted to do is make this a little bit more flexi flexible. And so we went about that by building um, a, a layer module, which can easily be extended. Um, and so, so far we've provided support for uh, batch normalization as well as dropout, which are just two different layer types that um, they'll typically make your models a little bit more robust. 
Um, but the but the nice feature of of these custom layers is that they can easily be extended, um, and you you just so if if you want to write your own custom layer, you can easily do that. Um, and so we were trying to to make this feel a little bit more like uh, like a Keras where where you have that flexibility. Um, it still has the support for training, um, and then we also. Uh, in in that sense of making it more customizable, we we also made some tweaks so that you can add in different loss functions as well. And then um, one one of the nice attributes I think too is this this feature for ensembles. So just generally on ensembles, what you would do is you would take multiple networks, have them each make a prediction, and then average those predictions together, um, and then that would be the output from the ensemble. And the reason that we would care about ensembles is, let's say again, we're, we're in a setting like climate modeling where your predictions for the current time step go and affect the dynamics of the system in the future. And so you can think if you, if you make one noisy prediction, it can really spiral these dynamics out of control very quickly. So you wanna make sure that you're getting uh, robust and really, uh, you know, uh, predictions that are that are not um, due to noise, and so uh, ensembles by having multiple members, it's it's like you're taking boats of of many different models, um, and so that can increase your robustness when when dealing with these those models. Um, and then also on on that topic, um, we've made it so it it uh, uses. Uh, Open MP, so all these ensembles will will run in parallel, um, so it's a, a little more efficient. Okay, um, so before I get to the application, I want to just go through um, this this little getting started example, just to really show you how easy it is to to go back and forth between um, between Keras and Fortran. So what I'm showing here is. Um, we're building a model in Keras. Um, so it's just constructing a neural network here. Um, you can see the, the network just shown visually. Um, so just a couple layers here. And then we're gonna convert it to uh, what would be the, the Fortran equivalent. So this functionality here, what it's doing is it's just extracting that important information from Keras. Um, and we're pr putting it in a, configuration that would be consistent with we'll, what will run in Fortran. Then we're gonna compile the Fortran side of FKB. And then we're just gonna pass that configuration into uh, just a test example in Fortran. And so, and then what you're seeing here is just a sanity check. So we're, we're making the prediction in, from the Keras model and then the prediction from the Fortran model, and we're just showing that those are equal to, I think, six decimal places. Um, and so um, just showing this, you know, what, what it looks like on the Fortran side, it's really just a matter of, um, you know, instantiating this, this network type, um, and then we're gonna load that configuration that came from Keras. And then when we want to make our prediction, it's just as simple as passing your uh, input array into the network. Um, so it's, um, we, we, we really tried to make this very easy in the sense that all you have to do is pass in that configuration um, and then you're, you're good to go. Um, okay, so now in, in the last couple of minutes, I'd, I'd like to show the application uh, from climate modeling. Um, so, uh, with, within climate modeling, um, we can, so as I mentioned before, you can train on historical data. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to train um, based on, you know, years of past data. We're going to do that in Keras, where we have access to GPUs so that the models will run a lot faster. And then what we're gonna do after we train those models, we wanna transfer them to Fortran so that they can run um, in a climate model simulator, um, SPCAM, where they can actually be coupled with the, the host model's dynamics. So their predictions at one time step will go and affect um, the, the actual 
uh, simulators dynamics going forward. Um, and so in this specific case, we're very interested in hyperparameters for these neural networks. So just briefly, hyperparameters are, um, they're basically a choice that at some level a human has to make. They're, they're something that can't really be trained or learned. Um, and so uh, an example of a hyperparameter might be the number of layers in your network. Um, so that's something that the human has to decide ahead of time. Um, and then um, once you've made that choice, then the network can, can train after that. So we want to evaluate how these hyperparameters affect not only training on the historic data, but also how those hyperparameters affect when we move over to the Fortran uh, environment. Okay. And so and this is just a kind of a pictorial representation of what we're doing, right? We're, we're training those in Keras, um, and then we want to move to this, this climate modeling uh, environment uh, based on Fortran. Um, and so I'll just, you know, briefly describe how this was done uh, before. So, so this is the method, uh, you know, I was doing prior to making FKB. And I thought this was, you know, it's really silly and kind of tedious. Um, so we really needed a better way to do that. Um, so how, how it would happen is that you would extract these parameters manually from, you know, whatever model you made in Keras. You would have to hard code each, you know, layer interaction in Fortran. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's fine in one sense, but anytime you make a change to these hyperparameters, for example, if I changed the number of layers and I went from nine layers to 10 layers, well, now I have to go in and rewrite some of this Fortran code and I have to recompile it every time. Um, and so we, we, the, the motivation for this was really to avoid this hassle of having to rewrite the code every time. Um, and so now, right, you, you train up all these models um, in, in Keras and you just move them over um, and all you have to do is specify where that configuration is coming from um, and then the, the Fortran part can run. Um, so I, I don't think it's that useful to actually go into the results, but I just want to show a, a flavor of, of what you can actually get insight into while using this. Um, so what I'm showing here on the X axis is the performance on that historic data. Um, and so this is the error. So a, a lower value here is better. Um, and then this is the performance on the, uh, within the simulations. So this is the, the Keras on the X axis when we're training in Keras. And then we've moved over to the Fortran uh, environment on the Y axis. Um, and so we're able to compare to see how those, uh, um, how those two, two paradigms kind of compare to each other. And then we can also make similar plots for all the hyperparameters of interest. Um, and that's what the, the color codings are showing. So, um, you know, this is, this is a, a problem that we're very interested in, seeing how, how can we create neural networks um, that we know are going to perform well um, when they're in that, that coupled setting running within the climate model. Um, so uh, FKB really provides a, a great option to be able to do that um, because it's so easy to transfer these models back and forth. Um, and then I'll just conclude by saying that uh, this is, you know, it's publicly available. Uh, it's on GitHub. Um, and, you know, I, I, I hope it will provide a, a, a good avenue for, for those of you wanting to implement neural networks um, in Fortran environments. So, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. We have time for questions. So uh, the first one is, uh, uh, what is missing in neural Fortran as compared to Keras? So is it only GPU access or something else? Um, so I, I would say there's a lot of things. So Keras is really, um, you know, it's, it's a very powerful library um, in the sense that you can build uh, architectures of any type, right? The, the customizability is a big feature. 
Um, another thing is also auto differentiation. So if, if you want to get into the specifics of how you actually train these networks, um, it require, re requires uh, doing differentiation on the um, any computations that you've done in the graph. Um, and so these libraries like Keras will have that feature already built in. Whereas in something like Neural Fortran, you have to essentially hard code uh, those the differentiation for for any of the computation. So um, I, I would say it's a host of things. A, a big portion of it is the customizability. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll have a question on my side. So uh, you so far have implemented only the uh, fully connected to dense layers, yes? So are there plans to extend it to well, something else like 1D convnets, which are used for weather modeling, if I'm not mistaken? Right, yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, we would like to extend it to 1D as well as 2D um, convolutions, because um, you could think it specifically in climate modeling, if you treated the, the surface of the Earth like, a, you know, it's a, it's a two-dimensional grid, basically. And so you can do convolutions over the grid. Um, so we, w you know, there are plans to extend this to, to 2D convolutions um, because there would, there would be a lot of applications for that. 